what's going on everybody and welcome to your 47th JavaScript tutorial in which we'll be learning about math object in JavaScript now math object is basically an inbuilt object in JavaScript which has its own properties and methods defined itself so as I said it's an inbuilt object so there's no need of doing like math object is equals to new math because new keyword triggers the constructor function and since this is just an object math is just an inbuilt object and not a function object in JavaScript therefore this need not to be done and should not be done because this line would throw an error so let's get started with some math objects and properties so first of all let's take a look at uh, math.py one of the most used values so uh, math.py actually stores the value of pi to some decimal places I don't know maybe 14 or 16 I guess but all of that are accurate so let's say if you want to use math.py uh, a hundred times in your program so you have the option of writing this long number a hundred times in your program which would make it ugly and unreadable or you have the option of using math.py which would make your program readable and pretty so now let's take a look at what math.py is let's just console.log this thing and here's our browser let's reload this and this is the value of math.py and let's take a look how many decimal places are there uh, and basically this should be split and it gives us 15 so there are 15 decimal places after the 3 point so there are, are 15 decimal it is accurate up to 15 decimal places the pi one so now let's just make a small program to illustrate a practical use of this let's say um, radius is oh let's just get it prompted by the user let's just say area is pi where we will use math.py r which is input by the user and r again so we know that the area of a circle is math.py star radius star radius which is pi r square so now let's just console lock this and let's just reload this uh, let's enter the radius as 1 and as we know that the radius of 1 center 1 unit of circle is equal to the pi the value of pi therefore we could verify that our program is actually working because pi is approximately equal to this number so we have got a bunch of more functions in math object and let's take a look at some of those so let's say in this program you just wanted um, this three right here so you didn't want it this all that decimal place and you just wanted to approx the area to the nearest integer so for that we've got a function um, called math dot floor now math dot floor what we do do is it would flow down your number to the nearest integer by in terms of simple hacks I would say that this math dot floor right here would remove all these decimal places and throw them in the garbage and would just return you this number so let's say if I put math dot floor right here and this value right here in the arguments and press enter then I got 3 so what it did is it just took out these decimal places and threw it out of this number and I'm using throw the word because this also works when you have very close values to 4 so for example you have the number 3.99999 and you press enter still you got 3 because the work of math.floor is just to round off to the smallest possible integer in the number so to fix this we have got math.seal now math.seal would round off to the largest possible number no matter what the decimal place is except zero obviously 
so if I do math dot seal uh, three point zero zero one then you'd expect four as output and four it is so math dot floor would round off to the nearest possible number the smallest possible number and math dot seal to the largest possible number um, so these two have a lot of use when you are working with random numbers and I'll just show you how do we work with them so let's say you want your program is about a game or anything where you required a random number from the CPU as the CPU choice and obviously the user would enter its own choice so how do you generate a random number well we have got a method in math object which is random so let's take a look at it first let's just do console.log math.random and here let's reload this and we have got this number and every time I reload this I get a new number and one thing you are noticing is that all these numbers lies between 0 to 1 and these contains I don't know, maybe 15 to 16 decimal places let's test it out 17 so the length is also variable sometimes I guess so this math dot random would generate any number between 0 and 1 and to make use of this you could say me that what's the use of this number how could I make it in simple whole numbers so to do that what we can do is we can harness the power of math.floor or math.seal with this random number so let's say if I do math.random star 100 and when I reload this then as you can see we are getting results like 7.424 11 73 40 49 which makes much sense now what I want to do is I just want to throw out this decimal and we could do that by using math.floor or math.seal depends on your demands so let's reload this and now we have got a nice little number range from 0 to 100 and 0 because the number could also be like 00011 so in this case the decimal is shifted only to two places and this thing right here is removed so the final number becomes zero 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 or simply nothing which is zero so that's how you work with math.floor with math.random and that's how you generate pretty much a random number from zero to hundred so if I specify like um, a thousand here then I could generate a number from zero to thousand and similarly run your brains and you'd figure out how you can generate some numbers within a specific range so let's take a look at some of the more properties and methods and I'll just console log math dot e which is the Euler's number and let's see what it is and this is 2.718 and all that stuff so you might need this in somewhere in your program if you wish to then we have a interesting function a method called square root now sqrt means square root and inside its parenthesis whichever number you supply the square root of that number would be returned to you so if I reload this then the square root of 10 is approximately equal to this number we could verify it with perfect squares which is 4 we got 2 uh, let's see 100 we'll get 10 and like that so square root would allow you to uh, basically return the square root of any number you supply in the parenthesis we have also got log in maths which is pretty much useful when you are in graphics and animation and when I reload this I get 4.6 this is this and this log is calculated with the base as E so remember that and we have got uh, what's next sine sine cos and tan as trigonometric functions as well 
so if you have ever been into trigonometry that uh, then you know that you could also express angles instead of degrees as radians so radians is basically like 2 pi 2 pi radians are 360 degrees so one radian is 360 by 2 pi and you could do the math then so in the sign you supply the value as the radians and, and not as the degrees so let's supply the value as um, what you say 180 or not 180 let's just go with math.pi and let's see what happens let's reload this and we got this value and I have no idea why we got this value but you could make use of that so let's just work with 10 90 and you could find your way around with that I'm not that much into trigonometry right now so similarly we have got cos as well and let's reload this we got the different answer and tan as well and let's reload this and this is the proof that this angle is not in degree because tan 90 is not defined actually because it's uh, upon zero some number upon zero I guess one so that's pretty much how you do with math object and math would kinda help you a lot in your JavaScript programs and yeah so I guess I forgot you to tell a workaround for that floor and seal thing and what if uh, let's suppose your input is dynamic and you just want to round off anything with x dot 5 or any number above that to x plus 1 or x dot 5 minus any number than that to x minus 1 so for that we have got round function and let's say if I supply 10.5 here and reload this then I get 11 but if I supply 10.4 and reload this then I get 10 and uh, though it's not a part of math but I would just uh, let you know about this that when we generated this program math.randomstar100 and this outputted us as this number and actually we could do something like this so if you want the decimals as well so instead of just flooring it down to a integral value we could make use of two fixed not two fixed would accept a decimal uh, sorry a integral value which is the number of decimals to appear after that number and when I reload this we get the number of decimals as 2 so every time you reload this then we are getting a kind of two places decimals assigned to the number automatically so I guess I guess now I'm, I've done everything I've passed on every knowledge to you which I know about math object and that's all about it so I'll see you then next time and don't forget to subscribe and I hope you learned something in this tutorial. See you then.